Hi, I'm Ruben Saltzman with Structure Tech Home Inspections, and today I'm going to show you how to test your sump pump. We always talk about the importance of having some type of backup plan in place in case your sump pump fails, but if you're a diligent homeowner, it's also a good idea as part of your spring maintenance plan to test your sump pump. It's been sitting dormant all winter long, it probably hasn't been running during the winter, and it's a good idea to make sure that it's still working. Be proactive about this. It's very quick and easy to do this, so I'll show you how. To start off, it's a good idea to figure out how you're going to have access to your sump basket. In a perfect world, you'll be able to take the lid off. Now, for most Minnesota homes, you're going to have a lid that's made out of plastic. It's going to be pretty solid and it might be held in place with a couple of screws. It's not a big deal to back those screws out a little bit. Give the sump basket cover a good hard yank and then you can take the cover off. Now, that's what makes up the majority of them. However, you, every once in a while, you'll find something super fancy like this one. Check this out. Isn't this sweet? You got this plexiglass cover, you got hinges, you got a gasket, you got the thumb screws. Oh, <laughs> it just it gives me the warm fuzzies. That's beautiful. And then on the other end of the spectrum, you have what we find on almost every new construction house today, which is a sump lid cover that's just gooped all full of caulk. Yeah, there's no way of getting that cover off without using a utility knife. You're gonna bust a whole bunch of blades trying to cut through that. Builders do this because the current radon code in Minnesota requires that all of these pathways for radon to enter the house be sealed up. And the easiest way to do it for a builder is to just goop the heck out of that thing, caulk it. it they're not doing a favor to the next homeowners. They're not making it easy to get in there, but that's just what we got. I'm not complaining. No, I guess I am complaining. Who am I kidding? <laughs> I don't like it, but that's what we got for new construction. If you have one of those, I'll tell you, instead of, instead of accessing it, a lot of the time, you're gonna have two plugs going to your sump basket. You're gonna have one of these plugs controls your pump. If you plug that pump directly into the outlet, the pump will kick on, it'll just run. But then the other plug, the plug between the outlet and the sump pump is going to be what connects to the float. And that thing controls the flow of electricity. So if the float goes way up in the air, if you have a high water level, it'll pass through electricity to your pump. But under normal circumstances where your float is low in the basket because you have a low level of water, it doesn't allow power to go to the pump. And the easy way to test your sump pump in those cases is to simply unplug both of them and plug your pump directly into the outlet. And as you can hear in the video here, we hear this whooshing. This thing is working. There it goes. That's great. It's working. Uh, in other cases, you may try doing this test and you'll just hear a buzzing noise like this. That sump pump has failed. It's bad, needs to be replaced. It's a good thing we tested it. In other cases, you'll have a float sitting inside that sump basket. In this particular case, you can see there's a float sitting at the bottom of this one. It's actually attached to the pump. To test it, all we need to do is reach in and lift it, just like this. Now we can see the pump kicks on. Beautiful. In other cases, you may have a float that's attached to basically a power cord. It's going to be about the size of a hand grenade, or maybe a tennis ball, I should say. And to test that, all we do is lift it up a little bit that will also get the pump to kick on. Now, I'll caution you. Back when I went through home inspector training, many decades ago, I sat through this class and this guy put the fear of God into us and he said, don't ever stick your hand inside a sump pump. Something could be energized and you could be electrocuted. And for the first couple of years, every time I wanted to test a sump pump, I'd find some stick or something like that to reach in there and kind of awkwardly lift the float. And then at some point I got lazy and I just started sticking my hand in there and everybody I know just sticks their hand in there. I've never heard of anybody actually being electrocuted, but I, I got to pass this on. I heard it could happen. So I'm warning you, if you really want to be safe, maybe use a wooden broom handle to lift up your sump, uh, your sump pump float. Maybe, maybe, maybe not. I don't know. So there's a word of caution for you, but at any rate, 
This is how we detest it. This is what we normally do during home inspections. Oh, and side note, notice the water shooting out of here. Out of, there's a little hole in the sump pump discharge tubing. That's not a problem. That hole is there because it needs to be there. It prevents airlock. Without that hole, you could actually have your pump not work at all. So it needs to be there. Home inspectors, this is not a defect. The hole is there for a reason and it should almost always be there. So back to ways to test your sump basket. We've showed you some ways to do it if you have access to it. If you want to do the surest test, the best way to possibly test your sump basket your, your sump pump is to run a garden hose in there, turn it on, fill a bunch of water into your sump basket and let the water just rise up. This is going to test the operation of both the float and the pump. It's the best thing you can do, but it does take a little more time and you definitely need to have access to your sump basket. And then finally, the last way which I don't advise is to take a bunch of five gallon buckets full of water and dump them into your sump basket until you get the pump to activate. It takes way more buckets of water than you might think. I've had a couple of oddball inspections where I ended up doing it to test the sump basket and I couldn't believe how many bucketfuls I needed to get that thing to operate. So that's how to test it. If you happen to try this test and your pump doesn't kick on, check the obvious stuff first. Is the pump plugged in? Does the outlet have power? Maybe you got a tripped GFI somewhere or a tripped circuit breaker. Make sure you got power there. Uh, check to make sure that your float isn't obstructed. That's a common issue that happens to people where their float gets caught on something. Even though the water level is very high, the float is stuck at the bottom. Check all the obvious stuff. If you do all of that and your pump still doesn't work, perhaps you need a new sump pump. Replacing them is a very simple project. It'll probably take you more time to drive to the store, get a new pump, and then drive home than it will take you to actually replace the pump. Assuming everything goes right. Every once in a while you get some complications. Okay, that's all I got. That's how to test your sump pump. I'm Ruben Saltzman with Structure Tech Home Inspections. Thanks for watching. Take care.